Today, I want to talk about and address the three common concerns that all new investors would have. For the context of this video, I'll be answering the questions in relation to the investments that I am managing for my clients, which predominantly invest in developing countries. Okay. Now, the first concern that most new investors has is, how do you make a return from your investments? So let me take some time to explain this. In terms of investment returns, regardless of what you invest in, be it stocks, property, crypto, etc., there are only two sources of returns, right? Capital gains and income. Essentially, capital gains refers to the increase in the price of an asset when it is sold. There are two main forms of capital gains, speculative capital gains and fundamental capital gains. A speculative capital gain occurs when there is no change in the value of the assets, but maybe due to higher demand, the asset is now selling at a higher price than it previously was. Right? A fundamental capital gain occurs when there is a visible improvement in the value of the assets, and because of that, it is now worth more than what it previously was. Okay? The second source of our returns can come from income that we receive from our investments. In the context of stocks, we call them as dividends. In the context of bonds, we call them interests. In the context of property, we call them rental income, yada yada yada. Right? Essentially, income returns are the additional output produced by our investments. Okay? While it does not affect the fundamentals of our investments, the fundamentals will affect the amount of income we can expect to receive. Right? To give you an analogy, a chicken will not fall sick just because it is laying in it. Right? But a sick chicken may lose its ability to produce good quality eggs. The same concept applies to your businesses and to your investments. The second concern that most new investors has is if it is safe to invest and what are your risks? To help us gain better insights as to the expectations for the future, we have to look further into the past, right? Based on a study that was conducted on the US returns from 1959 to 2009, when US as a country was transiting from a developing to a developed region, we can project the expected return behavior of our portfolio to be as follows. Now, the above behavior is only relevant to investments in developing region, for example, Asia, right? Things that are still developing and growing. And it is no longer applicable to regions that are developed, like your United States and also your Europe, as well as Singapore, right? Now, from the above chart itself, we can draw two insights. The first insight is that as your investment duration increases, your risk decreases as the range of returns receivable narrows over time, right? For example, if I only have one year to invest, the returns that I may receive can go from negative 10% to positive 20%, right? It is a huge spectrum. But if I have, say, 25 years to invest, my average returns per year will be around 5% to 8%, okay? The second insight is that if you are investing in companies or if you are investing in things that are growing, countries and regions that are developing, the probability of you making a loss on your investments is extremely low beyond the fifth year mark. Okay, so how did this fifth year mark come about? If you were to examine all the past financial crises that has occurred in the US over the last 100 years, you will realize that for most part, it will usually take the investor an average of about five years to recover his losses should he invest one day before the market crashes, right? So, is it safe to invest? As long as you have a long enough investment duration and you are investing in things that are growing, it is safe for you to invest as you are essentially mitigating your downside risk with the passage of time, okay? Now, the third concern that most new investors would have is if there is a chance that you may lose all your investments. In theory, yes. In practice, no. Here's why. 
In our case where we only invest in broadly diversified regional funds, the only way where we will lose all our investments is if 100% of the companies that the fund invests in goes bankrupt, which is highly unlikely. The risk of you losing all your investments is more likely if you're only investing in a handful of company and you don't diversify your investments accordingly. Okay, for us, what is more likely is a sudden decline in prices of about 30 to 50 percent due to the impact of a financial crisis or a recession on the businesses that we invest in. However, such a scenario is uncommon and does not occur frequently, and hence they are often known as black swan events, right? Now, even if it did happen, while our investments may be badly affected in the short run, in the long run, the value of our investments would eventually recover and be profitable. Riding on to my previous point, it takes a, the investor an average of about five years to recover from the losses suffered in the event of a financial crisis if he or she were to invest in things that are broadly diversified and growing. Right. So that's all I have for the video today. If you would like to find out how you can benefit by working with an independent financial advisor and a certified financial planner, you can reach out to me via my website. Do connect with me on the following social media platform as well to stay updated with future content and you can also slide into my DMs anytime if you have any questions. I'll be happy to help. Now all the links that you see here will be in the description below. So yeah, hope to connect with you all soon.